there's only one place in Frisco and all of Summit County to find a saloon, schoolhouse, and museum in the same building, and it's the heart of the Frisco Historic Park. The park has been on Main Street in Frisco since the 1980s, and every building there is more than 100 years old, including that former saloon. Each one features installations about local history, from mining and trapping to the Ute Tribe and colorful residents like Bill Thomas of Bill's Ranch. The historic park is free to visit and features 20 free presentations this summer, beginning in June. We talked with museum director Simone Bells to learn more about the summer schedule and the history of that saloon turned schoolhouse turned museum. Phil Lindemann, Crystal 93 News Director, on the phone today with Simone Belts. She is Museum Director at the Frisco Historic Park. Simone, thanks for making time to talk. You betcha. You have a huge summer season coming up at the Historic Park. Tell me a little bit, though, before we get started about the calendar, uh, about the Historic Park itself. Um, how long have you guys been around, and what can people find if they stop by any time of day, any time this summer? Of course. Um, the museum started out in 1983. We have a, a very interesting history here. Uh, the building was uh, actually built as a saloon in 1899, then converted shortly thereafter to a, a school house for the Frisco community and then after it uh, changed from a schoolhouse uh, the museum then opened in 1983 so it's a saloon turned schoolhouse turned museum uh, the museum is 35 years old uh, we have a tremendous support here in Frisco for preservation history and our museum um, we tell the story of the Ute Indians the railroad and the mining history the trappers that came through here and then of course all the individuals that um, um, continue to make this uh, a, a colorful community um, and the stories of all the families and uh, the community even the visitors that come to the community Great. so um, it's an incredible place we're um, hundred percent run by the municipality here so the museum is free all of our programming is free um, I always say we're a little town with a big history that's the truth. And uh, one fact that I know people always find interesting because I find it interesting, those buildings, most of them have been moved over time. They did not originally uh, sit where they are right now. That is correct. The, the main museum building is original to the property. However, the other structures, there's actually 13 total historic structures here on the one acre historic park. And they were brought in with, within a mile radius of the area. And they're all original to Frisco. They've all been restored. And uh, they feature exhibits um, and furnishings um, that represent uh, the history here in Frisco. Very cool. Um, what kind of uh, buildings uh, do you find the most interesting yourself there at the historic park? Like which one, obviously, you know, you've got the saloon turned schoolhouse turned museum, which is just yes. too cool of a history. Right. What, are, what other buildings do you really like there? Well, that's like asking me what my favorite child is because they are all like my the museum and the historic park um, is very near and dear to me. I've been in the industry for over 20 years, so this is my passion. Um, but one of the ones that does stand out is the Annie Roof House. Um, it's a little newlywed cabin, um, and what we do there is we represent um, and talk about women's history. Uh, the building is very dear to me because, unfortunately, uh, several years ago it suffered from an arson but we brought it back oh, wow. we've completely preserved it and then uh, just recently again there was another vandal uh, uh, an accidental vandalism if you want to call it that so that building is getting beat upon but yeah. it, <laughs> but, it, <laughs> but it's a beautiful <laughs> it's a beautiful building and we just you know we have to always make sure you know that we have to deal with risk management here but and then the other one is probably the Bill's Ranch house uh, the Bill's Ranch history uh, is very important to Frisco, uh, the, uh, Bill Thomas and his family, they had a ranch just on the outskirts of Frisco, and it was a lot of their efforts, their ranching efforts, and then um, their, um, basically they, they tried to help the community stay alive. You know, Frisco dwindled down to about 18 people at one point, oh, wow. and so the, to yeah, the, ranch, the ranching and the Thomas family really helped keep things afloat. So that one also stands out for me. But they are all amazing. There's a jail, there's a there's a two seater outhouse. <laughs> so Too so cool. much to see. <laughs> Definitely. No, no uh lack of history or uh, just very cool buildings 
historic artifacts, all that good stuff there. Yeah. And I heard that this year, um, like you said, you also do touch on uh, the history of you Indians in the area. This year, you guys are getting another structure, a UTP. Yeah. Yes, we sure are. Now, this is a, a replica Ute teepee, but it it does come from a company in Montrose, Colorado, and they provide teepees um, for the local Ute Indian Museum there, and uh, they are uh, pretty as authentic as possible um, for a repl replica teepee. So as we're speaking right now, that structure is being put in, in the uh, historic park. It's going to sit on the little knoll behind the gazebo where we hold all of our concerts, and that structure will also be available for people to enter and experience what a teepee is like. Very cool. Very cool. And then that brings me to the summer schedule. Um, so yeah. after uh, the TP installation gets finished, um, you guys have a very busy summer, over 20 events happening there. And like you said, they're all free. Yes, absolutely. They're all free and uh, no reservations required for any of these programs. Great. What are some of the uh, the highlighted programs, the ones that uh, have you excited, or maybe some new ones this year that you've never done before? Sure. Um, well, Founders Day is our annual heritage event, and it usually falls right around July 4th. Uh, so this year, it's because the 4th of July is midweek, we put Founders Day on uh, July 1st. So with that, we're expanding uh, that uh, day of events just because it is our 35th anniversary and the TP going in, the Founders Day event will be the official uh, ceremony or dedication. Um, we are bringing in Ute Tribe and they will be doing uh, a dance and a drum circle and uh, officially they will be the ones um, dedicating uh, the TP here at the historic park because it is their heritage and we wanted to make it as authentic to the community as possible with a with huge respect to the Ute, the Ute tribe nation here in Colorado. Um, cool. So with that event, too, we have music. Um, we have uh, gold panning. You can come ride a burrow. <laughs> so it is really our annual uh, sort of kickoff uh, or celebration of our history. So yeah, that's great. Free. Yep. Great way to start the July 4th weekend, like you said. Yes. Just a yes. cool event. And before, and it happens uh, before July 4th, on July 1st. July 1st, correct. Okay. It's that Sunday before July 4th. Great. Um, what else do you guys have on, uh, on tap this summer? Well, we also do our summer lunchtime lecture series. Uh, that is a series of 12 lectures every Wednesday here at the Historic Park. Um, and they are usually always uh, full. So you have to get here at least maybe 30 minutes, 15 minutes early just to get a seat. Uh, we hold them in the log chapel. We bring in different presenters from all over Colorado, different historians. Um, we bring in um, also um, presenters from different museums. And we're kicking that off June 6th, and again, that runs 12 weeks and goes all the way through August 29th. Um, the first, uh, the first presentation, and it actually kind of goes back to the to the Ute Indians. Um, this is a presentation about uh, the Lakota culture, um, and it is presented by Steve Friesen. He's the former museum director from the Buffalo Bill Museum. So we start off with a really great um, lecture, and then a couple of other ones are uh, the Matchless Mine. We're bringing someone from the Leadville Mining Museum to talk about uh, that history with with Baby Doe, um, and then. Of course, we, we also have uh, other authors coming in to talk about the tunnel history and then the Dillon Dam. There's so much. We cover, we try to present a little bit about everything. Like you said, the, the area is just so rich in history, not only uh, modern history, what's happened with Dillon Reservoir and mining and all that other stuff, but going back all the way to, uh, to the native history. It's just so rich and so deep. and Very much so. You yes. can find it all right there at the historic park. Absolutely. There's there's so many uh, different ways that we interpret things here. So you can you can interact with audio. You can read all the didactic material. You can just peruse the exhibits. Um, and then of course, going into the buildings themselves gives you that immersive experience. So we really try to make it interesting for all kinds of different museum goers. And where can people find out more? Uh, you know, find the full schedule and uh, learn more about the park before they show up. 
course. Um, everything is on the townoffrisco.com website, specifically friscohistoricpark.com. Um, the entire lecture series is posted there, all of our programs, um, including any tours that we do, uh, are also posted. The entire calendar is there. And uh, we, we have visual, we have photographs, too, if you want to go and look and see what these, what these programs are all about. Um, and then, we, of course, we also have information here at the museum. You can come by and pick up flyers. Great. Simone? Love talking with you about uh, the summer calendar there at the museum and some new installations. Looking forward to a great summer at the Frisco Historic Park. Thank you so much. We love our history here, so please come and check us out. Absolutely. Simone Bells with the Frisco Historic Park. Phil Lindemann on Crystal 93.